Ladies and gentlemen, the state of Tamil Nadu has been in the middle of a very precarious situation since September 2021. On one side is R. N. Ravi, an appointee of the centre in the form of the governor. On the other side is M. K. Stalin, appointed as chief minister by the party, which in turn has been elected by the people of Tamil Nadu. Now, these two individuals have not seen eye to eye since day one, and their long-standing rivalry has only intensified over the last one year. The matter, in fact, has reached court as well. The Supreme Court is hearing the matter. Of the 12 bills which are pending with him, the governor today decided to return 10 of them back to the ruling government. The Raj Bhavan says it needs clarification on these bills. The DMK says the governor essentially is speaking and behaving like a stooge of the central government whose only job is to harass the government, the elected government. The DMK is also saying that the governor has been made to eat humble pie by the Supreme Court and his false bravado is now nowhere to be seen. Governor Interesting. Is, like suddenly, uh, you know, sending 10 bills all together back now, what, what made him do this? See, the, the governor is made to eat humble pie. He has capitulated to the constitutional democracy that is our country. The governor has violated the constitution in letter and spirit. And but he has been giving us gyan about how if he does not sign the bill, the bill becomes dead. Now we are asking the governor, go, say that to the Supreme Court. Will you dare to do it? So why this false bravado? To please whom? So his intentions to scuttle the administration of the state of Tamil Nadu has been laid bare now. He has been listening to the diktats of the RSS and the BJP. Now they are not going to come and defend him in the Supreme Court. If he is a man who follows constitutional propriety and the high decorum of the governor's office, he would have resigned by now. But we have not got such news yet. He would have resigned and packed his bags. He has not done that. Now, interestingly, the governor's decision to run these bills comes four days before the government versus governor hearing resumes in the Supreme Court. During the previous hearing, the bench headed by the Chief Justice of India called the governor's actions a matter of serious concern. Remember, there is not just one state, but at least three states, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Punjab, that are in the Supreme Court appealing to the Supreme Court to ask their governors, their respective governors, to pass bills or at least give the green signal for the bills that have been sent to them by the government. The Tamil Nadu speaker, in response to what has happened today, has called for an emergency session on Saturday. This is when the state assembly will adopt these 10 bills and send it right back to the governor. Post that, post that, the governor will have no choice but to give his green signal. Point is, why are these bills triggering such a flashpoint between the two parties? And not just in one state, but multiple states that are not run by the BJP. The devil is in the details. Out of the 12 bills pending before the Rajya Sabha, in fact, before the Raj Bhavan, 11 of them propose changes which will clip the governor's wings and instead empower the states. If enacted, the state government and not the governor will have the power to appoint the vice chancellor of universities. That is one bill of the 10 that has been sent back. The BJP says the governor is well within his rights to return bills, claiming they will empower the DMK to indulge in corruption in universities. Coming Saturday, there is going to be an emergency assembly session where these 10 bills will, will be readopted and sent back to the Raj Bhavan. Now, the DMK is accusing the governor of uh, being scared of the Supreme Court hearing that they've gone to the Supreme Court and that this matter is going to be heard the coming 20th. As far as these bills are concerned, it is pertaining to the university's vice chancellor's appointment. Even in Tamil Nadu, the vice chancellors are appointed by the chancellor, that is the governor, as per the act. The... Um, the government or the DMK wants the vice chancellors to act as their agents. But in this, regarding this university's bills, it is a legal right of the governor. And if uh, the uh, government wants 
either the chief minister as the chancellor or the government you know to appoint vice chancellors it will lead only to huge corruption but if these bills are returned to him will the governor sit on them further or give his assent let's see what the constitution says as per article 200 of the constitution the governor has four powers vested with him one grant assent to these bills two withhold assent to the bills reserve the bills for president's consideration and fourth return the bill as soon as possible for reconsideration to the house viewers that as soon as possible reference is the key in this issue the constitution orders the governor to send back the bills as soon as possible but how soon is as soon there is no time frame the constitution doesn't tell us the supreme court has refused to specify a time frame either despite the fact that these matters have reached the court not once but multiple times this is a gray area in april this year the supreme court remarked as soon as possible has significant constitutional impact and that a governor must must respect it but again and this was uh, this was a matter pertaining to telangana the supreme court refused to set a timeline for governors to decide on bills this was in reference to the Tel telangana government's plea against their governor tamilisai sundarajan accusing her of sitting on bills much like the tamil nadu government has done much like the punjab government has done and much like the kerala government has done the government versus governor tussle is not only limited to tamil nadu or telangana it is a phenomena which has been prevalent in opposition ruled states ever since the bjp came to power at the center in 2014 bengal kerala punjab delhi each of these states are going through what we call governorsitis let me get our guest this evening Dolphin is the state uh, vice president of the Tamil Nadu BJP joining us on the broadcast thank you thank you very much mr sritharan uh, dr said hafiz is spokesperson of the dmk thank you very much for joining us and dr narayan lakshman is an associate editor at the hindu uh, helps give us perspective on stories that we are we are debating on mirror now so thank you all three of you for joining us dr said hafiz the bjp's contention is simple they are saying there have to be some checks and balances otherwise the dmk government will run riot and use universities as atms which is why the governor has decided to send back these bills to ensure that there is no corruption in the state how do you respond to that uh <clears throat> i like to remind to the bjp uh, spokesperson and the friend that the very appointed uh, vice chancellor of anna university mr veerappa isorappa who was appointed by your governor banwari uh, banwari lal prohit has involved himself in a 200 crore scam for appointing assistant professor for giving contracts what are you talking about corruption when we a person who was appointed by you has involved himself in the corruption so all these are all uh, uh, just uh, just a reasons to uh, de defy the constitution uh, to defy the democratic process okay in tamil nadu if that's the case what is your problem in kerala why is it a pan india phenomenon why is bjp using this phenomena throughout the states what's happening in west bengal so everywhere anybody other than bjp who is ruling is corrupt that is the narrative you want to build okay all that there are agencies to look forward sir if there is any corruption your ed is there every second week in uh, tamil nadu and doing uh, atrocities so let them do what whatever corruption case is there there are courts and we will challenge those uh, issues in the court now let us talk about the constitutional and democratic role that the governor has that is the whole point in the uh, that is the main point in this whole scenario see a governor who in the past has openly said that if he has kept a bill in abeyance it is considered as uh, as dead bill what made him take a u turn so this is the victory this is the real role of the governor that he has to abide by whatever the government of the day is telling so why why go to the supreme court and say no i have said i have kept it in abeyance it is dead what made you to rush up just four days before this uh, issue coming up in the court okay leave alone this university okay there is arguably a dispute fine leave it why why are you not passing the bills and giving sanction to prosecute the ministers of the previous government 
CBA comes and tells in the court that the governor has not sanctioned uh, action against Vijay Bhaskar. That is why you are not able to proceed to the inquiry. Why are you shielding them? If you are so against corruption, what is that that you are shielding Vijay Bhaskar from? So all these questions need to be answered. See, the observation of the Supreme Court, thankfully, is, uh, is an outcome of the legal effort that the DMK took to save the constitution and democratic principles of this country. If at all the, the, the Supreme okay. Court hadn't okay. made this harsh observation about the governor being a titular head and reminding him of the roles and responsibilities, this bill would have kept in abeyance forever. The governor cannot run a parallel government by interfering and obstructing the day-to-day -day activities of the government because end of the day we go to the people we answer them not the governor so for you know today one bill has been sent that was sent in the previous okay. regime it is the ADMK's government we are a power almost for two and a half years so three year old bill has been sent back only now you cannot be so lazy as observed by the Supreme Court as soon as possible means as soon as possible not as you wish okay Dolphin Sritharan Okay, Dolphin Sritharan, respond to what the DMK is saying, and not just the DMK. Uh, this is what governments uh, that are non-BJP governments across India are saying, that the BJP is appointing governors as political stooges whose only job is to harass the elected government and stall their workings and their businesses. That is the only job that the governor has been asked to do by the BJP government. That is the allegation that is coming in. And not just from Bilal, from across India. Good evening. Uh, this is my maiden interview. Uh, the, thanks for uh, Mirror. Now, uh, what Tamil Nadu situation? I am not a spokesperson of Raj Bhavan. I am a spokesperson of Tamil Nadu BJP. But one thing, uh, press release by our uh, Honorable Governor of Tamil Nadu, this returning of this 10 uh, university appointment of 10 uh, vice chancellors and uh, changing the chancellors uh, from uh, governor to chief minister, that is the major bill. And uh, these are all the bill clearly addressed to all the detailed by our honorable governor. But fortunately or unfortunately, government mm -hmm. of Tamil Nadu, honorable our uh, chief minister, uh, he was given mandate for uh, some fire and odd uh, election manifesto, what they gave. But uh, day by day, the Stalin government was very unpopular today, getting all uh, dissatisfaction and uh, uh, all the women, all cross, cross of life in Tamil Nadu. So want to change the Link. attraction. Mm -hmm. They are not giving any, any man, uh, this, uh, this DMK never spoke about this chancellor and all and this uh, mm -hmm. governor and all activities. When, he was, when Stalin was an uh, opposition leader, always uh, ran away to governor's residence to take action against the state government that time. And that time he uh, never uh, saw governor as a rubber stamp or uh, governor is li like uh, whatever we send, the governor has to sign. That is not it. all. governor has clearly said, okay. we have followed the constitution. As per the law, as per the constitution only, he is uh, taking action. He has other option also. Uh, there is no any limit time frame for him to take uh, keep the fights with him. Already, that, uh, in the last two and a half years, nearly that 69 is the and uh, more than 69 uh, uh, bills are already signed and given to the government no, of Tamil that, Nadu. Therein Tamil lies Nadu. the problem. Therein lies the problem, uh, yeah. Dr. Narayan Lakshman. Therein lies the problem. Now, the Supreme Court can say, Dr. Lakshman, what it has said. They can say that this government versus, versus governor battle is a very serious issue. Uh, they can go ahead and say that as soon as possible is very important to this entire debate, etc. They can say what they want to say. But the fact is, ultimately, at the end of the day, someone has to tell us what as soon as possible is. The Constitution That's doesn't tell us. One, one Neither example does the is Supreme Court. Just Absolutely a minute. Sure. This, think, is, this uh, is for Dr. This... Lakshman. Dr. Lakshman, go ahead, please. Yes, I think this uh, conversation, this debate and the lawsuits and cases that are following will actually uh, push the, ju uh, the jurisdiction, the judges, the, the court system to define this. And uh, that's actually a good thing because uh, let's take a step back. What we're seeing here is the BJP consistently using the office of governor to peddle its own brand of politics uh, in states where it does not enjoy power. Uh, and all of the arguments that the preceding speaker made are complete rubbish. It, it doesn't matter whether Stalin 
when he was in the opposition bench went to the governor or not. It doesn't matter what his political view is. What matters is constitutionality and the fact that the elected government alone represents the will of the people. So if they are sending it to you, okay, fine, you can send it back. Like you correctly said, Shreya, there are the four options. Once those options are exhausted, that's when it gets interesting. Mm. If now you have this uh, special session and it go gets readopted and sent back, what are they going to argue next? That they're going to further bend the constitutional rule and withhold assent, which is beyond any framework provided by the constitution? No. And like you correctly pointed out, why is this happening in so many non-BJP states? So I think uh, what we need to be wary of is that at a national level, the BJP has not shown any restraint in terms of bending institutional propriety to its own uh, to its own better interest, let's say. I'm not saying any illegality is being co committed, but a co un unconstitutional action has happened from time to time. So I think the good and healthy part of this debate is that it's going to lead us to a situation where as soon as possible is going to get defined. And then there will be no further debate on what the governor is required to do. So hopefully that will be the end of the debate and the power will come back to the representatives of the people. Uh, but, but here's the thing, the constitution doesn't define as soon as possible. It just leaves it hanging in the air. Do you think by the end of the hearing that is currently underway, that as soon as possible will get defined by the Supreme Court? Because, you know, the, gov the government of the day could very well step in and say, this is for us to legislate, not for you to decide. They have been saying this been using this phrase, uh, you know, uh, 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 quite a number of times in many uh, high profile headline cases recently, they could very well turn and say it even in this case. Is that for me? Yeah, that was for you. Shreya, was that to me? Mr. Lakshman, that question was for you. Yeah, so yeah, I do think it's quite possible uh, that they'll they'll do it. I mean, the court itself will step in, and if they don't, uh, the BJP would have to be careful about uh, actually, uh, you know, they do have the majority in parliament. They would have to be careful about setting this because tomorrow this could be something that comes and, you know, bites them back. So I think it is probably a matter best left in the hands of the court. I agree with you. The court has deflected to the... Uh, executive and sent critical uh, rulings back. But at the same time, given the importance constitutionally of this, and given that it is a partisan issue, where partisan politics plays a big role, uh, it is it is something that the court should and hopefully will take a view on and define for the rest of the nation. Mm. Dr. Hafiz, you were putting your hand up. You wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah, you've been asking about what as soon as possible means. As soon as possible is what the DMK government is acting upon. See, today he has uh, sent back the bill. We are going it on 18th. Just uh, within 14 hours, we are convening a session and uh, we are readopting the bill and sending it back. That is the speed. As soon as possible means that governor should act as soon as possible in the interest of the state, uh, leaving the politic politics and his uh, uh, political view to any issues. So that is one point. And second point, uh, there is a moral okay. angle to it. You know, <laughs> when, when, when the powers were restricted to the governor, in the spirit of a moral and ethical responsibility, assuming that the governor will be a non-political issue, that is why this convention and this tradition was handed over to the governor. So this con this is a break in the convention and tradition where governor acts against his own government. He's just a titular head. So I think there, there should also be a moral introspection which the Supreme Court has, uh, has advised the governors who of, of these six states where they say like, you have to examine yourself and see who the real representative of the government are and you cannot be a real representative. So there, there needs to be a moral responsibility on part of the union government and the governors of the day as uh, a fellow speaker who said, this will come back and by today it is, you, you have an absolute power. Tomorrow, if you're not, uh, not in the center, not enjoying the power, what will happen if the same attitude is being applied to you by the next party who's ruling in the center? Who will you go to? So all this will destruct the democratic and constitutional uh, uh, principle. We are a quasi-federal okay. state. We are not a completely uh, union government dependent state or we're not completely a state government uh, dependent state. In a quasi-federal state, the constitution, uh, constituent assembly 
Assembly debates clearly says that there has to be a consensus and they have to work together. Whereas the governor is doing politics and he's entirely opposing to every single action that the government of the day is taking. So this is totally unwelcomable. I think okay. uh, so we should thank to the, uh, okay. the judges and the Supreme Court that who, who intervened at the right time and showed the mirror uh, to the governors of the, uh, uh, of the BJP uh, appointed uh, governors that, th look, this is what your limits Hafiz. are. You have to act Hafiz. within this. Maybe you can thank them. Maybe you can thank them yeah. once they tell us what as soon as possible is. Once they define what as soon as possible is. Once they give us a time frame. We'll leave it there for the moment. No, Thank you no. very much. The Shreya, government even for this, bills, even delaying for them, them sending them back to governments. The government are they the undermining back? the democratic will of the people? Are they undermining the democratic will of the people? Are they subverting the democratic process? All these questions currently being debated in the Supreme Court. Gentlemen, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much uh, to Dolphin Sritaran. Thank you. This was your first time on TV. It was good to have you on the show. We hope to see you more often. Dr. Saeed Hafiz, thank you very much. And Dr. Narayan Lakshman, thank you very much as well.